Welcome to part nine of James Warnwick's uh, Irish Truths and All Irish Religions. In this one, we are discussing the the chapter Irish Gods, and uh, I'll be only doing part one of of this because it is a very long one. This part is nearly an hour long, and there's another of quite lengthy part to it as well, based on Irish Gods. Now, I was actually very surprised reading through this on this on the theories that go through. Some of them actually still survived today. Yeah, even though it's written well over 100 years ago. So enjoy. And there's been a few things in here that I didn't know before about and actually does check out. Some writers so, from a jealous regard to the reputation of their ancestors have been unwilling to acknowledge the idolatry of ancient Aaron. They reject the testimony as to images and decline to accept the record as to heathen deities. Yet it is surely a satisfaction to know that the highest and unseen was worshipped at all though under rude and material symbolism instead of being unknown and unfelt. If claiming to be, in some degree at least, of Celtic heritage, the Irish may conceivably be esteemed of a kindred fate with Celtic Gauls and Celtic Germans, whose divinities were recognised by the Romans, though called from certain supposed similitudes by more familiar Italian names. The Irish, from their geographical position, were a mixture of many peoples, forming a succession of human layers, so to speak, according to the number of the newcomers and the period of local supremacy. The tendency of populations northward and westward from wars or migrations was to carry to air various races from the continent of Europe and their different customs and their gods, having more permanent influence than the visitation of their coast by oriental seamen. Thus, we perceive in fragmentary traditions and superstitions the adoration of the elements and the fanciful embodiment of divine attributes in their phases and their apparent contradictions. In some way or another, the islanders failed not to see with Aristotle that, quote, the principle of life is God, unquote. Yet J.S. Mill taught that religion may exist without a belief in a God. In our investigations, we meet bear in mind that the learned Professor Rees asserts that, quote, most of the myths of the modern Celts are to be bound manipulated so as to form the opening chapters of what has been usually regarded as early history of the British Isles, unquote. So we know of other lands that their chronicles may be a disguised form of fate clad in the mysticism fostered by all priests. As ancient mythology is apparently so idle and meaningless, are now perceived to embody truth, scientific and religious. So the seemingly foolish traditions of nations, descriptive in their early history, are recognised to convey ideas more or less astronomical and theological. Nature worship has been regarded as foundation of all religions. Aristotle left this remarkable saying, quote, When we try to reach the infinite and the divine by means of mere abstract terms, are we even now better than children trying to place a ladder against the sky? Unquote. Early man could not avoid anthropizing the deity. The god could show himself, he could walk, talk, come down, go up. Earlier still, man saw the reflection of the godhead in the sun, the storm, and the productive forces. Boscoen writes, Quote, the religion of Assyria was in constitution essentially as a nature worship. Its pantheon was composed of deifications of nature powers. In this opinion, I know I differ considerably from Assyriologists, Mr. Sai, Mr. Lenormand, and others of being of opinion that the system was one of solar worship. Unquote. An author speaks of, quote, one great surge of voluptuous nature worship that swept into Europe. Unquote. According to Pliny, quote, the world and sky in whose embrace all things are enclosed must be deemed a god, eternal, immense, ever begotten, and never to perish. To seek things beyond this is of no profit to man, and they transcend the limits of his faculties. End quote. Not a few learned men of our day are satisfied with Pliny's principles. That nature worship is a natural impulse has been well illustrated illustrating a pretty story of a little English girl whose father is expected to come home from sea and who was seen to take up some water from a basin near her and say, quote, beautiful water sent home my father here, unquote. We have a right to assume that our island races existing in the country long before the arrival of the Celts in the West did indulge in nature worship and continue to do so long after they came to the shores. Even Knut, at the end of a thousand years after Christ, found 
occasion to say, quote, They worship heathen gods, and the sun or the moon, fire or rivers, water, or wells or stones, or forest trees of any kind. Unquote. Baron Falbach said, quote, The word gods has been used to express the concealed, remote, unknown causes of the effects man witnessed. Unquote. And Dormer's Origins of Primitive Superstitions declares that, quote, If monotheism had been an original doctrine, traces of such belief would have remained among all peoples. Unquote. Lubbock considered the Adaman Islanders, quote, have no idea of a supreme being, unquote. Professor Joel speaks of, quote, the day of which men began to become God, unquote. Dr. Karras, while affirming, quote, the anthropomorphic idol is doomed before the tribunal of science, says the idea of God is and always has been a moral idea, unquote. Pictus observes, Quote, there existed very anciently in Ireland a particular worship, which, by the nature of its doctrines, by the character of its symbols, and by the names of its gods, lies near the religion of the Cabras of Samothracia, emanating probably from Phoenicia. Unquote. He thought the Phoenicians introduced it into Aaron, the Mokinus or Holy Isle. Of the system, Brian's ancient mythology has much to relate. A French author holds that the Celtic religion was based upon a belief in the dual powers of good and evil in perpetual strife, and that the Irish associated with this a contradictory pantheism and naturalism, as in the theology of Hesiod. Certainly, the Irish called sea, land, or trees to witness to their oaths. The four masters had this passage, quote, Leary took oaths by the sun and the wind and all the elements, to the Leinster men that he would never come against them after setting him at liberty. Unquote. The version in the Lower Nahudra is that, quote, Leary swore by the sun and moon, the water and the air, day and night, sea and land, that he would never again during life demand the Barumian tribute of the Leinster men. Unquote. Or Baron Crow at the Archaeological Association in 1869 declared the poem Fae pre-Christian, adding, quote, that the pagan Irish worshipped and invoked, as did all other pagan people, the personified powers of nature, as well as certain natural objects, is quite true. Unquote. The Irish prayer, the Fae Fieda, Fieda, runs thus, Quote, I beseech the waters to assist me, I beseech heaven and earth, and Cron especially. I take your hard warfare against them. May sea pouring not abandon them to the work of Fina, Crushes them in the North Mountain. Ocane. Unquote. And then we're told that the water rose and drowned many. This prayer was said to have been used by Cú Cullen when pressed hard by the forces of Maeve, Queen of the Connacht. If the Paleolithic man to be allowed to have been susceptible to impressions of nature, the mixture of many races driven one upon the other in the western corner of Europe, and so coming in contact with some higher influences could not be imagined without the impulses of devotion to the mighty and mysterious forces of nature. If the Paleolithic man may be allowed to have been susceptible to impressions of nature, the mixture of many races driven one upon the other in the western corner of Europe, and so coming in contact with some higher influences could not be imagined without impulses of devotion to the mighty and mysterious forces of nature. Our knowledge of so-called Celtic religion has been largely derived from Caesar and other Roman authorities. These imbued with Italian ideas were not very reliable observers. They saw Jupiter in one Celtic deity, Mars, Minerva, Apollo and Mercury in others. They knew the people after relations more or less intimate with visitors or traders from more enlightened lands. They were acquainted with Iberians, Germans and Celts in Gaul but only partially with those across the channel until Christianity had made some way. The wilder men of those nationalities in Ireland and Northern Scotland were little known. These, at any rate, had not quite the same mythology as Romans saw in Gaul. It may be granted that the traditional option, oh, sorry, opinions of the Irish would be so safely or safe conveyed to, to us through their early literature, rude as it might be and capable of conflicting interpretations, historical or mythological. 
In spite of the obscurity of Fenian and other poets of that remote age, their writings do furnish a better key to the religion of Aaron and than theories founded upon the remarks of Roman writers respecting Gaulish divinities. It must, however, be conceded that, in the main, Ireland consisted of varieties of the great of the three great ethnological divisions of Gaul, commonly classed as Iberian, German and Celtic, and inherited something from each. A difficulty springs up from the language in which the early poets wrote. Like our English tongue, the Irish passed through many phases, and the reading thereof has occasioned much contention amongst translators. The early introduction of Latin, Norman French and English increased the obscurity and hampered the labours of copyists in the Middle Ages, as well as the case with the composite languages known as Welsh. The God most prominently set forth in early Irish missionary records in the lives of the saints and in ancient bards is Crom, Crom Crook or Ken Crook, the bleeding head, or Crom Crook, the crooked or bent one of the mound. As Crom Cougar, the great creator he is, by some writers has been identified with the Persian Crom Kruger. Crom has been rendered great and Cruan the thunderer. One considers Cromluck as the altar of the great god. He is also known as Genrothi and the head of all gods. Crom Dov Sunday, or Crom Downing, kept early in August, it was a festival of Black Crom. He figures in the several lives of Hartrick. At the touch of the, the same sacred staff of Jesus, his image fell to the ground. He is associated with Magschlecht, a mound near Bally Magorn, or Tullyhead Barney, now County Cavan. The Welsh god, Pen Crook, or Crook, chief of the mound, answered to the Irish deity. He was certainly a sun god, for his image was surrounded by the fixed representations of twelve lesser divinities. Irish imagination pictured the first of gold, the others of silver. There were certainly stones, and as Andrew Lang remarks, quote, all Greek temples had their fetish stone, and each stone had its legend, unquote. The one surrounded with the twelve would rightly suggest the sun and the twelve signs of the zodiac. An old reference to Crom has been recorded in Ohm letters, thus translated, quote, In it Crook was, and twelve idols of stone around him, and himself of gold, unquote. In the old book, Dinschenkus, we read thus of Crom Crook, quote, To whom they sacrifice the firstborn of every offspring, and the firstborn of their children, unquote. This record of their heathen fathers must have been doubtless a libel, in the excess of zeal, the priests of Crom were the Crom Tiric. Instead of gold, one story declares the image was ornamented with bronze and a face to south or sun. It was set upon the open air on the Magschlachta, says Colgan, the field of adoration. They who are not Irish or Welsh scholars have to submit to a great variety of readings and meanings and translation and translators. The mythology has been put thus into verse by T. D. McGee. Quote, their ocean god was Manan Matlair, whose angry lips, in their white foam full of wood and turf, whole fleet of ships. Crom was their day god, and their thunderer, made morning and eclipse. Reed was their queen of song, and unto her they prayed about fire touched lips. Unquote. Professor Reese has an explanation of Crom Crook as the crooked or bent one of the mounds, saying, quote, The pagan sanctuary has been so long falling into decay that of the lesser idols on their heads were to be seen above ground, and that the idol of Ken Crook, which meant the head of our chief of the mound, was slowly hastening to its fall, whence the story of having had an invisible blow dealt with by Patrick. The mother of the Irish gods, the Bonadei of Romans, appears to have been the Morgan to whom the white-horned bull was sacred. She was the great queen. Some old poet had sung, quote, And knew her name, and from her is called two paps above Lucker. Unquote. From her paps, she is believed to feed the other deities, and hence became the mother of the gods. According to another, she was the goddess of battle with the Tua, and one of the wives of the great Dagda. She was taught to have her home in the Sai, or Fairy, fairy palaces. The Bonadier of Rome is said to be Hyperborean, hence observes Crow, it may be in Ireland that gave the goddess and her worship to the Romans. 
as Anu, she may have been the goddess of wealth. Rhea, or Re, was also the queen of heaven. Not a few crescents ha have been found in the neighbourhood of Castle Rhea. Dr. Keaton calls uh, Morrigan, Bab, and Maka the three chief goddesses of the two Dodonans. Her white horn bull of Krukon, Finn Banak, was in opposite direction of the brown bull of Cooley. She was goddess of prosperity. She occasionally appeared in the shape of a bird and addressed the bull donned. She was the Moriogon, identified with uh, Sybil. The female principal was adored by the old Irish in various forms. As the black virgin, she is the dark mould or matter from whom the virgin material or things proceed. She is the Anna Premia or the, of the Phoenicians and the white queen of women. She may be Breed or Bridget, goddess of wisdom, but daughter of the Druid Dubtok. Several goddesses are the Indian Dawn goddesses. Anya, or Circle, was a mother of all gods. Re or Rhea, says Rhys, was the, quote, mother of the gods of the non-Celtic race, unquote. The Celtic Hus or Isis was a mysterious god of Gaul. The Irish form was Esser, meaning he who kindles a fire, and the creator. In this we are reminded of the Etruscan Air and the Egyptian Sun Bull Asi and the Persian Aesir, the Scandinavian Aesir and the Hindu Aswar. The Gvata Gita says of the last that, quote, he resides in every mortal, unquote. Aesius was acknowledged in the British Isles. In one place he is represented with a hatchet cutting down a tree. As the Breton Isus, the figure is not attractive looking. Don Martin styles Isis or Hissus, quote, the Jehovah of the Gauls, unquote. He was perhaps the Acer or living one of the Etruscans. Le Flop declares, quote, Isis is the true God of the Gauls and stands from the supreme being, absolute and free, unquote. The name occurs on the altar erected at the time of the Emperor Tiberius, which was found in 1711 under the choir of Notre Dame, Paris. Sun gods were as common in Ireland as in other lands. Under the head of sun worship, the subject is discussed, whereas some other references may be made in this place. The Irish sun gods, naturally enough, fought successfully in summer, and the bards gave many illustrations of their weakness in winter. Sun heroes were not precisely deities, as they were able to go down to Hades. Angus, the young son, whose foster father was Meter, the king in the fairies, was protector of the dawn goddess Etienne whom he discreetly kept in a glass grinion or sun or sun bower, where he sustained her being most delicately on the fragrance and bloom of flowers. His father was the great god Dagda. Sun gods usually have golden hair and are given to shooting up arrows or sunbeams, like Chaldean ones. As a rule, they are not to be brought up by their mothers. One, in fact, was discovered in a pig sky. They grow very rapidly and are helpers and friends of mankind, but are engaged everywhere in ceaseless conflicts with the gods or demons of darkness. The Irish sun gods had chariots like those of the East. They indulged in the pleasures of the chase and of fighting, but more given to pursuit of Aaron's fairest daughters. Occasionally they made improper acquaintance with darker beings and were led to trouble thereby. Green is the appellation of the sun, and Karnuk for the priest of the solar da deity. Strabo mentions that a temple in Cappadocia in to Apollo Granus. Ovid notes a goddess called by the ancient Grana. The Firegrins had a god Granus. Grain and Baal both refer to the sun. J. T. O'Flaherty regards the Irish word Grain as pure Phoenician. The four masters informed their readers that, quote, the monarch Lyra has sworn Ratha Grania August Gravta, unquote, that is, by the sun and the wind. Breaking his oath, he was killed by these divinities. Espius held that the Usus, king of Tree, erected two pillars for worship of the sun and wind. It has been affirmed by an Aristic scholar that the Irish Cote worshipped the sun under forty different names. Dal Grenia, or sun standard, was the banner of the reputed Fingal. Docta was an Apollo, or the sun. He was also the god of fire. The Phoenicians have been credited as the introducers of Irish solar deities. Sir S. Rush Merrick 
held their origin in these islands from archite sun worship. Tedian was the archite god, the Lord of Mystery. H. O'Brien in Phoenician Ireland, Dublin, 1822, spoke of the Irish word Sibyl as a name which the Irish, as well as almost all other nations, designated and worshipped Sibyl. Sibola, an ear of corn, being a symbol of Sears and Sibyl of the Phoenicians. Several sub- supposed Phoenician relics, especially swords, have been discovered in Ireland. Gaulish, sorry, Gaulish Bellinus was known over these islands. In his temples of Bayou and at Bath there are images of the solar god. He was adored too at Mont Saint Michel. A remnant of his worship is seen as the custom of maids washing their faces on May morn dew and in mounting a hill to see the sunrise. According to Scidius, the word may be rendered to 2 plus 8 plus 30 plus 5 plus 50 plus 70 plus 200 or 365, the period in days of the sun's annual round. The solar Hercules was represented in Irish by Om. The god of light was ever god in the heavens. Bellinus was Bellus or Billus from Bellus, an hour or ray, and therefore a form of Apollo. As Apollo Bellinus, he was a young son, armed with arrows or rays, and was exhibited as a young man without a beard and rays round his head. As Apollo Abelius, he was the old or winter son, having no rays. The Brehan god was Belsivarchus, Mars and Apollo being identical. The votive altar at St. Lizer bears the names of Minerva and Belisana. Baron Shodruk de Croissant's writing upon Belisana, goddess of the gods, observes that Caesar, quote, had found in Isius, Taranus, Teutes, Camullus, Belisana, an identity with Jupiter, Mercury, Apollo, Mars, and Minerva of Greek and Romans. Belisana, without lance or shield, was called Queen of Arrows, for example, the solar rays. She was represented as thinking profoundly. Saun, literally servant, was derived from, from Sam, son, also Samhan, like the sun. As the Irish Pluto, he is guardian of the dead. As such, he received prayers for all souls on Hallow's Eve. The hour of Shemos is the sun. Ceres, god of fire, is also feminine equivalent of Sera, goddess of nature. As the horse was a symbol of the sun, we are not surprised to see it associated with god Cunabellan of Gaul, who also had the sun's face with locks of hair. The Gaulish Cernus appears as an old man with horns on his head. Le Blanc, in Etude sur le symbolism judique, asserts that the name Balsab proves that Baal, Bel, or Beal is the same as Irish salmon or salmon. All is personification of the sacred fire becoming visible. The year, the work of Saun the Sun, was known as the harmony of Beale Saun, adds Leblanc. Quote was the idol which the King of Ireland adored after the name of the head of all the gods. Unquote. In the Psalms we read, quote, they join themselves to Baal for and eat the sacrifice of the dead. Unquote. This was true of many ancient countries and perhaps may be applied to Ireland. A hymn to Apollo appearing to the ably conducted Sunny Horse magazine is so beautiful and so truly descriptive of the sun and fire worship of ancient Aaron that a verse of it may be transcribed. Quote, Pile up the altar with faggots afresh, the heads be off severed, straw, wheat and rye, pouring libations of wine on the flesh, that odorous incense ascend the sky, Ward against evil, guard of the bride, glorious sun god, prince of the Lear, Olympus compelling, with harmless swirling, Apollo Edon, worshipped with fire. Unquote. There was an Irish fish god associated with caves and storms, which he attributes to Dagon in the land of the Philistines. Neith, a god of war, had two wives, Nemean and Thea, and these were styled goddesses of war. The Book of Leinster names Brian, Tucker, and Sukabara as goddess gods of the two of the Tua. The Irish Bab is also the Gaulish um, Badna, and yet not a goddess of war. Hugh Ardusius was also known to Saint Austin as a libidinous Stephen. Ao was another Celtic god. Hamalus, the Gaulish Mercury, whose image was on the Pied Dom, was the Irish Cummel, father of the mythical Fionn, and said to be the same as the Welsh Gwyn, son of Nudd. 
the Irish Thoth was probably a copy of uh, Thoth or the Gaulish Teut, God of War. Calvanus, the Welsh Cumblan, was adorned both isles. The secta is named in Devon, Anglesey, and in South West Ireland. Dromor supposed the deity is the first to place and then of the peoples. We saw minor gods as Guinea Locorum and asked what race it was gave the Celtic lands as population spirits. He regarded the masses of divinities as, quote, very possibly creations of the people here long before the Celts, unquote. The non-Aryan mythology has doubtlessly great influence on the religion of the, of the Gaels. When Patrick tried conversion upon the king's daughters Etna and Fnula, they inquired if his god lived in the hills, valleys, fountains or rivers. Seeing his party in white, the princesses concluded that they were men of the Shi, or our divinities. So imagine the popular Mitraic fate of the East reached Ireland. It did gain the shores of Gaul, for in 1598 a stone cyst was dug up near Dijon, inclu- enclosing a glass vessel. Upon the stone was this Greek inscription, quote, In the sacred wood of Mitras, this tumulus covers the body of Sandonat's high priest, returned thou ungodly person for the protecting gods preserve my ashes, unquote. Chaldean influence may well be carried to Aaron by Tyrian traders. Very many terms of divination used there are like those employed in Chaldaic. A Chaldean record on psychic or divination was found in India in 1765. Matuas, so associated with Irish deities, have been taught to be wandering Chaldees. It is singular that the Irish Venus was recognised under the name of Bigo Nan. and Mother, in which the Persian would be Biduct, Nane, and Mitra. The circle may represent the universe. The Irish god, Timor, represents means great circle. He was the Alpha and Omega, the perfect decad, or ten, of Pythagoras. Muk was another name for the great god. Comparing Irish gods with others, Neat has been identified with the Nat of India and Neat of Egypt. Krishna, the sun, with the Indian Krishna, Prith, Lord of the Air, with Pritha, a title of Vishnu, Nir, Latinized to Nurus, with the Naros of India, How with Kadra, Amti with Buddhist Om, Isar with Isra, and so on. Hovdia, the middle and end, re- reminds us of the Orphic hymn, quote, Zeus is the first, Zeus is the last, Zeus is the head, Zeus is the middle, unquote. The God of the Gael, writes Donald Ross, was outside of him and draped awfully by his imagination. The deity everywhere has been regarded with awe and even terror in all religious systems. Pantheism, however, in some mystical form, entered the mind of the Gael as well as that of the Greek and Hindu. While Orpheus sang, quote, All has come from the bosom of Zeus, unquote, Finlanders her- held that their god, Ka, was the bosom of Conantaris, or nature. Some fancy the butterfly, Delbaud, was in Ireland the symbol of God, as a change of being. Quote, Bell was the source of all being, and the Scandinavian Tosco, after whom our Tuesday is named, was the father of all beings. Unquote. Dr. Todd affirmed, quote, The Irish had no knowledge of the dig and gentrium, Saturn, Apollo, Mars, and company, or of the feminine deities Juno, Venus, Minerva, etc., under any Celtic name or designation. Unquote. Crow answered, quote, Now this is not true. The De Gentium, under the ancient Gaulish or in Iberno Celtic names, are often met with an Irish story. Unquote. Well, Crow held that Caesar and Tacticus, that the Celts of Gaul and our isles, had similar gods to those of Rome and Greece. Though the transcribers of the Book of Leinster during the 15th, 16th and 17th centuries corrupted the manuscripts from ignorance more than design, yet not a few learned men trace that in the Book of Most Ancient Irish myth- Mythological Treaties. Which saw a fighting race that of air and war gods were common. Some were battle furies like Nemon and the Nemon of Gaul. Others were like Cabra, whose exploits are narrated by the Four Masters and who, as a hero, was, as Professor Rees says, quote, placed on a level with the gods, unquote. 
It is not easy, however, to discover that these ancient legends, such as Cory's ancient fragments, supposes, quote, recognises the primary element of all things, two independent principles of the nature of male and female, and those in mystic union as the soul and body constitute the great hermaphric deity, one quote. There was scarcely that refinement in ancient Ireland. Dr. Kennedy's Book of God perceives that the Irish own or ain the cycle of seasons course, as in Belain, the year of Baal, the sun. The Irish Annius is the astrologer conveying, surveying the circle. Bay is regarded as a circle or cycle in Irish and Sanskrit. The Irish Nov was, in Kennedy's view, a Phoenician great winged one, or Knet of Egypt. He speaks of, quote, their more ancient manner of invocation being Ain Tred Don Anam Tulak Fan Malak Eron. Triple God, whose name is Tulak Fan Malak. This third person was a destroyer. Quote, Fan he places with Pan or Fans. Another fanciful author sees the sources of an Irish religious festival as the Charista of Romans, a fee sacred to Concord and the uh, loves at the end of the year, whence the word Eucharist. Lenore is the more correct in saying astronomy is truly the fruitful source of which the mages and the priests have drawn ancient and modern fables. The Reverend R. Smitty writes of the Celtic seal, the heaven and seal of a heavenly person. Church, a circle, or is swell, or swellocked, the pillar temples of the Druids. He derives simple from Timkal, round as the sun. Taking year as both God and day, he gets Da Sol, Da Lun, Da Mort, Da Cadin, Da Adon, Da Banon, Da Saturn, which is put as Day of the Sun, Day of the Moon, Day of the Dead, Day of the First God, Day of the High God, Day of the Woman, and Day of Saturn. After all, we may proceed with Max Muller that Quote, the whole dictionary of ancient religion is made up of metaphor. Unquote. The French author of Sirius, who perceives that in that star the origin of all thundering and barking gods, has a god or of thunder in the Celtic Tiaran, such as which is tea affixed to the sound made by a dog. Quote, the Celtic priests or druids, says he, who, like the Egyptian priests, had adopted the Shion Livrea for a symbol call themselves the ministers of, un, of an unknown god, descended and from upon earth as thought under a human form and having all the characteristics of that Egyptian god with the head of a dog, benefactor of humanity, supreme civilization, civilizing legislator, poet, and musician, king of bards, inventor, and protector of agriculture. Regulator of waters, protector in darkness, raised the presidency in a circle of stones, founder of sacred ceremony, model priest invoked under the name of Father. Unquote. All that is very Welsh and cannot be applied to Ireland. The Welsh triads have had claimed them as a greater age than modern critics are disposed to allow. Many of the Welsh gods therein recorded are of doubtful pagan origin and belong to radical mysticism that crept into Europe from the East during the early Middle Ages. The Irish, except for where the bards came under the influence of the same way of Oriental or Gnostic learning, of olden time knew little of Adan, the seed bearer, and in himself, Amon, the beginning, Silly, the mystery, Don, the just, Dove, he is, Divad, regulator, Dion, separate one, Divif, I am, Da, being, Gawar, Dawn of Day, Gwartheven, supreme, Ton, source, tar, one of your, nod, manifest, period, cause, ren, pervader, ruff, overlooker, and so on. There is no mention of their recognition of the three attributes, planet, alwyn, and gran, indicated by the three divergent rays. They had no circle of cognant uh, as the infinite space, nor did they look upon the cromlech as representing in three stones upholding the capstone, the doctrine of trinity in unity. We cannot conceive an Irish bard writing as did a Welsh bard of Caravan. 
Quote, her complexion is formed of the mild light in the evening hour and splendid, graceful, bright and gentle lady of the mystic song. Unquote. But we do know that the early crusaders brought home much of this mystic talk from the East and that the ecclesiastics of an imaginative turn were charmed with pseudo-Christian Gnosticism. The Irish pagan, as well as the Welsh pagan, was ignorant of such refinement of speech or ideas. The Welsh Archdruid assured the writer of his belief of the so-called pagan philosophy was a source of barbarism that was a teaching of the triads, was but the continuation of a far older faith in his fathers. O'Sheen more properly pictures the opinions of his race in Ireland and Scotland, though they are rather negative than affirmative. He doubtless never entered in the esoteric circle of Druidism and is very far from displaying any tincture of mysticism in his verses. His gods were hardly spiritual but vulnerable, as when Fingal fought the Scandinavian deity that shrieked when wounded, quote, as rolled into himself he rose upon the wind. Unquote. Yet the gods could disturb the winds and waves and bring storms on foes and so destroy them. Dr. Blair was struck with the almost total absence of religious ideas in Oshin. Even at the funeral in Timora, we have only, quote, loud at once from the hundred bards rose the so song of the tomb, unquote. He lived in the age of Christianity, here the challenge of the wild Norman. Quote, are the gods of the Christians as great as Loda or Odin of the Lothlands? Unquote. Dr. Donald Clark fancied that O'Sheen's day, the people had lost, lost faith in their old Druidic, Druidic religion and had not embraced Christianity. The remarks of Dr. H. Waddle are entitled to careful attention. Referring to O'Sheen, he says, All local gods to him are a subject of ridicule. He recognised the deity if he could be said to recognise him at all, as omnipresent vital essence everywhere diffused in the world or centred for a lifetime in heroes. He himself, his kindred, his forefathers and the human race at large were dependent solely on the atmosphere. Their souls were identified with the air, heaven was their natural home, earth their temporary residence and fire the element of purification, or the bright path to mortality for them was the hour of dissolution came. The incarnation of Malvina's remains on the principle of transmutation and escape from dark, perched by clay into luminous and immortal ether, is a beautiful illustration of this. After all, one is constrained to admit that with Ernest Rees, quote, I for one am quite prepared to believe in a druidic res residue, after you have stripped all that is medieval and biblical from the poems of Taliesin, quote. So it is with O'Sheen or other bars of Irish origin. With all that has been accumulating of medieval character from the hands of supposed transcribers and translators, and yet remains something of the primeval barbaric conception of religion in the grand old tales of Iron. In the barbaric story of the Battle of Gavra, we read, quote, I return my thanks to the gods, unquote. This led Aino Kearney to observe, quote, from this passage it is evident that the pure monotheism of the Druids had dwindled down into a vulgar polytheism previous to the date of the Fenian era. Historians assert that Tigermas was the first monarch who introduced polytheism and that a great multitude of people were struck dead on the worship of strange gods. The sun, moon, stars, elements and many animals were adored were, by the Egyptians were introduced as deities. One quote. Jocelyn, an interesting romancer speaking of Legacies, son of King Neil, tells the reader that, quote, he swore by an idol called Karanrati, or the head of all the gods, because he believed to be foolish people gave answers, unquote. A periodical called the Harp of Aaron, which appeared in 1818, has the following argument with an old tradition, quote, that the ancient Irish were not idolaters. We have sufficient evidence to convince any person who possessed of common understanding. We are informed that Tiger Mass, the king, was the first who paid divine honours to an idol, and that had been struck by lightning, his death was considered as a judgment. Surely, if idolatry had been a common practice of the people, their bards and history would neither have represented the act of the monarch as a crime, nor his death punishment from heaven for the offence. Unquote. The quotations from bardic chroniclers and poems made by Professor Rees and others would not sanction the views of the Harp of Aaron. Their Nuada, Diarmid, Conquabar, and so on, 
were assuredly sun deities. Rhys says of the last named Conquebar was doubtless not a man. His sister Dectar, the mother of Cucullan, is so is called a goddess. He is known of the Book of the Dun as Dalmad or Terrestrial God. The River Boyne may have had its name from the goddess of Bone, wife of an Irish Neptune Nodens. Adolphe Petet was formerly regarded as the most learned Celtic scholar in France. He is very precise in his belief of Irish polytheism, though influenced too strongly by the Cabric theory. Quote, the double Cabric Irish chain, says he, is only the ascending development of the two primitive principles. Unquote. Ornery people may fail to follow this philosophy in his metaphysical views concerning the early Irish. There are many, there may doubt his progression of six degrees in Irish masculine and feminine divinities. He had held that era, Eo, Anu, and Cara were the only same being in the three degrees of development. That Persephian, daughter of Cara, was the Greek Persephone, the Roman Persephone. That Charis and Cara were Chorus and his sister Cor. That Charis was Dogda, god of fire, and that he was sort of Demigorgus. That Aesir and Era, or Air, was a fundamental duality to give birth to two chains of progressive parallels, masculine and feminine fire and water, sun and moon, that the goddess Lut or Luf is power and desire, and that Lut is force, that the Madeira children of Dagda were rays of God, that the Aesir was god of intelligent fire, and that Breed was goddess of wisdom and poetry, and like Nat, while A was a goddess of vital fire. Much of this might be esteemed by readers as pleasing a romantic philosophy of Irish mythology. It may be useful to look the religion of the Manx or the people of the Isle of Man who were, if not Irish, close kinsmen of the same. We take the following from a Manx poem first printed in 1778 as dealing with the divinities. Quote, Manon Bjog, Hoi Mac of Lur, was he the first that ruled the land, a pagan and a sorcerer, he was at least, I understand. Unquote. This Manon, a deity of the two Dodons, was a god of waters. But Mach on Lur was styled son of the sea. Nied and Bad were gods of the wind. We are informed by the author that by the name of Gov, a blaze, fire, etc., the pagan Irish meant to insinuate that Sam Gov was particularly inspired by the solar heat. The motto of, of old was, let the altar be forever blazed to Dagda. Ask was a new moon to Manx and Irish. The Irish says that Paternoster at the new moon and crossing themselves add, quote, May you leave us safe as you found us. Unquote. Caed was a goddess of nature. An old poem says there was a weeping for day of sound bop. Kira was the sun, and Bob the Bad was the god of the wind. Breed, daughter of Dagda, was the goddess of wisdom and poets. And Matter Dea, Ea, goddess of fire. Manx traditions and customs similar to the Irish. Sword worship. In some respects, figured in the past as with the Huns and etc. Famous heroes or deities had the names of the swords preserved, as in the case of Arthur and Fingal. Speaking swords occur in the Lavnahit, as recorded in the re review Celtic, noting the custom of bringing in the tongue of the slain as, trophic, as trophies, the Irish manuscript says, quote, and is thus they ought to do that and their swords on their ties when they used to make the trophy, or their swords used to turn against them when they made a false trophy, or demons used to speak to them from their arms. Unquote. Spencer gives a narrative on the fabled power of the sword, saying, quote, So do the Irish at this day when they go into battle say certain prayers or charms to their swords, making a cross therewith on the earth and trusting the points of the blade into the ground, thinking thereby to have a better success in fight. Also, they use commonly to swear by the swords. Unquote. The fairies, or she, often represented as deities. As the two were largely supernatural and their spirits haunted the old spots, it is not surprising that the Arachta, or spectres, were revered by the Irish. Though Patrick drove many of them away, a number fled across the Nicol Bay to the pagans of Shilan. In St. Fiac's story of the saint, we are assured that the Irish used to worship the she. This she worship 
wrote Burn Crow had nothing to do with Druidism, in fact, was opposed to it, and must have preceded it in Ireland. They were deified mortals, anyhow, and capable of by intercourse with women and producing heroes. But one was hardly justified in declaring that the worship of these deities reached back to the remotest antiquity to at least a thousand years before the Druids appeared. The Shi and the Druids were cu- curiously opposed to each other in legends. The Shi goddess in the adventures of Condola Rua told Kaos Druid that the Druidism had the grades conferred on it by the great land or Elysium. It was thought that their temples were the so-called juridical monuments, especially New Range. They were scattered all over Ireland. Why the Irish Mac Och, king of the fairies, living in a glass structure, is meaning the young son, Rees said that story, quote, doubtless belonged originally to, to Irish mythology before any Celts settled in Ireland, unquote. This Mac Och, or Angus, is regarded as the Irish counterpart of Merlin or Emrys. He is associated with a fairy maiden, in the form of a swan. He was the son of the divine king of the Tua and usurped his father's crown, as Zeus did that of his father Cronus. And in other lands, the domains of heroes and gods continually encroach upon each other, as divine attributes were bestowed upon departed chiefs and divine honours after the Tapu order are often paid to the living heads of Seps. In no country, perhaps, were there more reverence given to chiefs and in none more rigorous obedience exacted from the people by those who then controlled the very tribal lands. It may be that this peculiarity of native character would be counted devotion to saints in Irish Christian times. Still, it has been pointed out how tradition has converted honoured heroes or divinities of former days into modern saints. That is at least very a very curious coincidence and by no means confined to Ireland, being witnessed in Scotland, Wales, Cornwall and Brittany. The great age to which some of these lived according to such authorities as the Four Masters, etc., excites attention. St. Darcia and St. Uh, Fecken continued on earth 180 years, both St. Kieran 300, St. Mokta 300, St. Senkel 330. Their ubiquity is suspicious. Thus, there are 25 St. Shannons or Shannons, 37 Molans, 43 Molasses, 48 Mukons, 200 Colmans, and a number called St. Dogan, St. Moloch, St. Ould, and so on. Is not perceived so many divided with an alias. If the ancient Irish observes Marcus Keane belonged to one great system of mythology, we would naturally expect to find traditions of different gods of the same system preserved in the same locality. This, accordingly, we find to be the case. Mrs. Wilkes, in Ur of the Chaldees, remarked that many of the saints of Ireland bear Aryan and Semitic names. Again, quote, they, the missionaries, found it necessary in many cases to preserve the Christian faith in the names of many of the gods and heroes of their forefathers, unquote. She intercesses St. Moloch, St. Dagon, St. Dahl, St. Satan, St. <laughs> Dule, St. Cronin, etc. Another points out that St. Luan is derived from Luan or Lugus, St. Bolon from Vulcan, St. Kieran from the centaur Kieran, and St. Declan from Declan, the Irish God of Generation. Mount Sunrat held that St. Shannon was the god Darl. The author of the Towers and Temples of Ancient Ireland derived St. Dool from Diabal, and St. Madog from Madog of Virginity, and St. Eric from Erak, the son. He found 24 with the same of Columb, 12 of Breed, 25 of Sennan, 12 of De Cool, and 30 of Cronin. He contended that the Irish hagiology began to commit it to writing in the 10th century, and that in after times, when it was taught desirable to ascribe the ancient legends to Christian saints, they were without distinction referred to the 5th and 6th centuries, as of course no celebrated saint could be ascribed to a period before Patrick and that the ancient literature seems to have been destroyed by the early Christians. Although everyone cannot be expected to follow Marcus Keane in opinion, there is much plausibility, if not reason, in the assumption of some of the Irish saints were baptised deities of the island. Professor Bevan, in a recent lecture of the Grushin College, showed how the Celtic gods were romanicised. 
Omas became Mercury, Cranus Apollo, Carux or Commodus Mars, Breed Minerva, Isis Jupiter. He thought that the Irish religion was partly Aboriginal forms of, of belief and partially Druidic. He considered transition from Druidism to Christianity a very gradual one. Lud, whose temples were on the site of Paul's Cathedral, he recognised as the Irish Nordens. As the review, Kelty contains a wealth of learning pertaining to mythology of Ireland. Some information from the work may be placed before the reader. Bab, one of the Irish goddesses of war, had three sisters, Nimmon, Maka and Morrigan, or Morrigu. These are described as furies, able to confound armies, even through assuming the form of a crow. Hennessy thought that these three were separate beings. Quote, the attributes of Nimmon being those of being confounded with her victims with madness, whilst Morrigu incited deeds of valour and planned strife and battle, and Maka revelled and missed the bodies of the slain. Unquote. Bab was the daughter also of the mythical Tua king Ernmus. She inspired fear and so produced lunacy. Stan, Stanley O'Grady, in his Critical and Philosophical History of Ireland, adduces evidence of the useful labours of the early Irish gods, whom he detects under the assumed names of heroes. Parathon, whom he declared from the forest plains of the Liffey, the Dagda Moor drove back to sea from Mortimley, Forming the district now known as the Louth, Lou taught men first to ride on horses. Predna first discovered and smelted gold in Ireland. When the old original gods of Ireland were driven out by a younger, more vigorous set of divinities, they retired to Tir Nanog, land of the young, and to Tir Nambio, land of life, and or to Tir Na Fomor. The Temple of Ned, the war god, was near the foil, or to O'Grady. Zagnamore was the divine title given to a hero named Eka, who lived many centuries before the birth of Christ, and in the depths of the prehistoric ages, he was the mortal skine or ward of an elder god, Ethelthan. He considered the Moria, or Great Queen, to be even more important than the Dagnamore. She was connected with wealth, fertility, and war. She could transform herself into a water serpent, and so on. Then there is Dana, who became Breed, mother of the three gods, Brian, Inkar, or Ikbar, and Inkar. Though the daughter of Dagda, or the good god, king of the Tua, she was wife to Breast, king of the Fomor. As goddess of literature, it is fitting that Ekne, poetry, or knowledge, should be her descendant. The old form of the goddess Breed is thought to have been Briganta. Four inscriptions to her have been found on the east of Ireland. The god Brian was formerly Brennus. The writings of Barbaros de Jubin in the Cour de la Literature Celtique have been justly admired. As he regarded the stories concerning migration of early races and narratives of heroes and heroines as having a mythological side, his views of Irish gods are interesting. When Parathon arrived in Ireland, the country was far from a complete in form. At Magitha, he had a battle with Kitta Gridnonus. The word Cunus, without feet, suggests Vitra, the Vedic god of evil, who possessed neither feet nor hands. He was assisted by men only for one foot and one hand, like Ajekpad, the one-footed, and Vaimasa, the shortless demon of the Hindu Vedas. Parathon and the victory freed Iron from far and for more. All his race, five thousand, were struck dead by the gods in one day and so was the Silver Age destroyed by the anger of Jupiter against Iniobe. The chronicler had no record of years, but of days. Parathon arrived first to May, the festival of the god of death, Beltna, an ancestor of the human race. In older Earth's manuscripts, he is described as the son of that deity. He gained the shore in Kilmere River, opposite the setting sun, where dead Celts recovered their lives. The god Dagda, Dagda Devasis, the good god, yet king of the two Danans, was the Zeus or Amazul of Irish mythology. The Danans, or people of God, were like the Divas of India, gods of, of the day, light and life. The Fomor, their enemies, represent the titans of Greek story, whose chief breasts, Balor or Tetra, was identical with the Persian Armathan, Vedic Yama, or even Varuna. The Fomor are, says Jubinville, 
the gods of the dead of night and of storms. On the other hand, the Tua are the gods of life, of day and of the sun, constituting another group, the less ancient of the gods. If we believe in doctrinal Celts for following the Celtic theory, night preceding day. The Fomorian gods of the earth and night were spoken of by the Christian chroniclers as pirates ravaging the coast, but the Book of Invasion simply mentions their arrival by sea. It must be monsters for work treating of them for its title, The History of Monsters. Even Geraldus Cumbers translated for more by Gigantibus. Among these stories told to them was one giving some Fomorians both one foot and one hand, while others were goat headed. The tale told of the kings exacting the tribute of two thirds of corn and milk and two out of three children born in the family reminds us of the Greek Minotaur. The Fomor seem to belong to the beginning of all things, since no Irish legend knows of anything before the 